Hello and welcome to this look at Puffin Storybooks. So this week I'm going to zip through the first 50 of these right back to 1941 up to about 1946, 1947. We'll have a look at all those very early Puffin Storybooks and uh, stop at interesting ones along the way. So without further ado, let's get to it. Right, so this is the very first uh, Puffin storybook from 1941. Um, I haven't quite got every single uh, early Puffin storybook, but I've got most of them. I'm missing maybe uh, five or six from the first uh, few hundred. So um, there are the odd one that's missing, but um, I just wanted to show you what I've got because uh, I think these are lovely books. These are the very earliest ones from the 1940s. This is 1941, which is Wurzel Gummidge, the, the first ever uh, Puffin storybook. These are all the first edition um, edition copies, by the way. Um, Cornish Adventure, Cuckoo Clocks. You see they've got the, um, the tri-banding similar to the main Penguin books of the year, although that was soon to change. And we've got Smokey there. <clears throat> Insect Man, which is actually quite a common one to find. Um, and then you've got this one, which I found quite a difficult one to find. This is from 1942, the family from One End Street. Uh, Micro Man, this is number eight. Nice one, the Puffin Puzzle Book. Um, ain't nothing like a like a puffin, as they say. Um, that's number number nine. And number ten, Tenzin Mongolia. Eleven there. Now this is the start of the books, which um, are actually uh, more picturesque uh, and picture jackets rather than the traditional penguin style. Jungle John, not Jungle Jim, Jungle John. So you have the Ready Fists, Gay Neck, My Friend Mr. Leaky. So these are actually a bit more robust, so I imagine these are towards the end of the war now, yeah, 1944. <clears throat> it's quite a tough one. Afki's 10. A lot of these are, are classics, but some of them are, you could say, forgotten classics, shall we say. Um, Palaces on Monday, Marjorie Fisher, great book. Coconut Island. Um, this is by the uh, renowned woodcarver Robert Givings, so hence the woodcarving jacket. And uh, there's the odd illustration inside, which is what he was known for. Um, he did a few other penguins um, around this time. The most noted pelican, in actual fact, being Blue Angels and Whales uh, from 1937, which is well worth tracking down. Um, Flaps and Braids. Now, this is quite interesting because this um, uh, has got an overstamp sticker on. Um, so the price, as of the 1st of January 1946, it had increased to one shilling. So uh, a bit of an oddity that one. This is number 20 in the series. And this actually came out, it was first published in 1945, but as of 1946, the price had gone up. So I'm just going to pop those spine on. Uh, that's the first 20. There we go, carry on through these. So we got, we'll meet in England. It's just a hint now of the covers wrapping around, which is something that would definitely happen later on. Robert Louis Stevenson's Charles Garden of Earth. Very, very tough to find this one. Um, the illustrations by Eva Garnett making this one quite uh, quite sought after. Uh, one of those much loved children's books and very, very tough to find. It took me a long time to get that one in first edition. Ferry the Fearless, Green Tree Downs, 24. David Goes to Zululand, 25. Starlight. So these are very much of the era. When you think these are um, 70, getting on for 80 years old now, you can see these are quite almost historical documents, aren't they? This is uh, Storm Along. Number 28 here. North After Seals. Uh, 29. 30. This is the second Wurzel Gummidge. Wurzel Gummidge and... Saucy Nancy, a bit of an improvement over that very first uh, puffin book. And we've got the full wraparound jackets starting to come in now. 31, Jam Tomorrow, a tough one to find. 32, Red Ruff. Ah, oh, 
I do like this one. So this is uh, Incredible Adventures of Professor Brain. So really nice, bold cover. Um, Norman Hunter, illustrated by none other than Heath Robinson. So how fantastic is that? Um, I love the way the puffins are holding up the uh, the banner there. Um, this is just fantastic. And this is, a, if you get any early puffins, this is just phenomenal. So uh, highly, highly recommended this one. And uh, this first was published 1946. Yeah, look at that. 76 Heath Robinson illustrations. So I think... I'm going to need to make another part, so I'll leave that one on top, but certainly one to look out for. Number 34 is uh, Kidnapped by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Nice jacket on that classic. So 35 is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now this has got the original Tenniel illustrations, front and back illust um, illustration on the covers. Absolute classic. Um, however, it is trumped later on by uh, Through the Looking Glass, and when we do get to that one, I shall show you why. But that's uh, the first one. Treasure Island, another children's children's classic. Pretty good, that one. In fact, look at that map on the back. It's copying the old Dell map backs, which, uh, once again, that'll be subject of another video to come. That's number 36. 37 here, South Country Secrets. It's quite a, quite a tough one to find that. Um... Nice use of the, the Puffin logo there. You don't see that very often. That was number 37. 38, yeah, Cranes Flying South. Fairly common, that one. This was nice, Columbus Sales. It says written and illustrated, but there's hardly any illustrations in there. Just a few. Discovery, this is more one of the, the non-fiction ones. Fairly straightforward, easy to find. Um, and that's number 40. Oh, this was such a hard one to get in first edition, Ballet Shoes. It's an absolute classic uh, for children, no street field. Um, very, very, very difficult to get hold of. It took me so long, I mean, literally years to get a copy of this. And when I did find one, it was in really tip-top, tip-top condition. So I was over the moon with that one. Uh, and that's number 41. Secret of Dead Man's Cove. Now, this looks a bit like an Ina Blyton, which Penguin didn't actually publish. Um, and this is number 42. You can see the uh, attraction there. 43, which is a Genie Lee. And this is uh, the one I was hoping was in this first 50. This is Through the Looking Glass uh, by Lewis Carroll. Once again, a follow-up to uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Now, the way they did this one, if you look back, that's the back cover. So it's Alma and with the writing in reverse. So it's almost like she's come through the cover. Uh, really clever, that. This is a fantastic edition. Not very difficult to find. Highly, highly recommended. Number 45. Mr. Sheridan's Umbrella. Another historical. Kids historical. Susanna of the Mounties. Now you have to ask what the appeal would have been of this uh, in post-war Britain for, um, for young children. Don't really know, to be honest. Can't see it myself. Um, but that was number 46. Young Detectives, another one which I think was probably cashing in on the uh, Ina Blyton's of the day. Um, quite a tough one to find, that one. 47. 48, Golden Island. 49 was uh, the young Walter Scott. And the very last one, number 50, that we'll look at today at least, is uh, Children of the New Forest, uh, Captain Marat. And this is quite a big, thick one. It's two shillings, so not cheap by any means. And uh, this 50th book came out in 1948. That was the 50th uh, 50th Puffin. And this is, more, this is now in the style of what they would be uh, right through to the 60s now. So... Um, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through those early Puffin storybooks as much as I did. Um, I'll certainly continue this series when I get a chance and we'll do uh, 51 to 100. Um, so until then, do please like this video, share it if you wouldn't mind. Subscribe to the channel for more Penguin Book related videos. There'll be uh, links in the description and also on the cards all around the screen here. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.